the human I don't want to call your being this human mechanism because the being is not it happened this human mechanism has come with a certain possibility and capability that either it can live as a very small and conceited existence or it can live as a an endless possibility though our physicality has come with boundary because without a boundary there is no physical existence without a defined boundary how to create a creator had no other way to do it please see this how to create you and me this and that without drawing a boundary with this form of existence there was no choice about that physicality had to be done yes no but that's a lie that's not true the boundary is only for those who see the surface of life if you look at it closer there are no boundaries today the modern science we've been saying this forever but they didn't take us seriously today modern science is clearly telling you there is no such thing as this and that the whole existence is a diaspora of activity going on it's a continuity all the time not only there is no this and that there is no here and there there is no then and now this is physics i'm not talking spirituality or mysticism this is modern physics their language the language of science today is becoming far more mystical than the mystical they're beginning to talk like uh, harry potter stuff i only heard things from people i never read that thing <laughs> if you are a child you have a need for these things as you're growing up you cut out all that nonsense but if you really grow up once again you have a need for those things <laughs> isn't it so <laughs> when you're a child your imagination runs wild and all these things excite you when you beginning to become an adult all this nonsense you cut it out and this is me that's you it's fine because for a variety of reasons i'll come to that but as you get older once again what's beyond this you want to know the need for knowing that once again becomes strong so this need has bred all kinds of stories people's imaginations running wild and a lot of ridiculous nonsense but what you need to know is the reality is far more nonsensical than the greatest nonsense that anybody can create 
When I say nonsensical, it definitely will not fit into what you call a sense. This is what modern science is really struggling with. They're trying to somehow make sense out of it. But there is simply no sense. Everything that you call a sense essentially comes from your logical mind. It has to be logical. That is what is sensible, isn't it? Hmm? If I say, you are here also, you are there also, does it make sense? Because it's not logical. So you need to understand. Today in human understanding, sense means it must be logical. The moment somebody loses the train of logic, then he's senseless, isn't it? Yes? Even now you're listening to me. Because there is a train of logic to the, what I'm saying. If I lose this and start saying whatever I want, what's happened to him? Sadhguru, you also? You are our hope, you also come. <laughs> but the existential doesn't fit into your logical sense at all, at all. Your logical sense has a little place in the existence, but the existence has no place in your logic. It's simply impossible to fit in. Because of this, uh, the scientists are really at quandary because their whole training is to maintain a steady train of logic. And now what they're seeing and discovering is completely, absolutely not in the realm of logic. So they're coming up with words like uh, fuzzy logic and this and that. They're just finding excuses to be logical because it's very hard to be illogical and still make sense. It's simply almost out of… that possibility doesn't exist. If you want to use human languages, you have to be logical, isn't it? How to construct a sentence without being logical, tell me. Even if I say, want to say one sentence, it has to have a logical train, otherwise how? So because of this, there's a phenomenal amount of confusion, misuse and all kinds of things, misconceptions. So, uh, right now talking about that doesn't make sense. Talk about this, where we are right now, and the next one. Little, within the realm of logic, we can push it. We're willing to push our logic, isn't it? Hmm? We're willing to push it. <laughs> well, this Harry Potter lady also wrote a story. He was here and something happened, this, 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 this and he went there. Okay. You see just right, he was here, he was there and then there was, he was there and he was here and then this happened but that didn't happen. You'll think she's gone crazy, isn't it? Please understand, even to the most illogical, we are trying to bring some logic. Otherwise, in our minds, it doesn't make sense. The most absurd thing, even if someone is speaking something utterly absurd, even he's trying to make some sense, isn't it? Logical sense, I mean. Yes or no? So, using the logical, because you have to use it, you can't drop it. You do not have the ability to leave your logic and walk away. Only with insanity you can do that. But even that is not true. Even a, someone who has gone totally off, become completely psychologically broken or lost in th that way, even he has his own logic. 
doesn't make sense to you, but to them it means something, that's why they're going on with such passion. You see, they have more passion than you <laughs> about anything, yes or no? They have much more passion because it makes too much sense to them, whatever they're doing. So even if you lose your mind, you still cannot lose your logic, it's still there because essentially the intellect is still functioning out of your control but still going on logically. So we cannot abandon this, we can only use it. Either you can use it to restrict yourself or you can use it to liberate yourself. But you cannot abandon this. People have used it in so many ways. One of the greatest actresses in Hollywood, Greta Garbo, was a hairdresser's assistant in a small village in Europe and she was twenty-seven. So she was just helping the hairdresser around and one day a man was sitting and for a shave and she bought the hot water that was needed for this purpose. That man just looked at her in the mirror and he said, You know something? You are really beautiful. I have never seen a more beautiful face in my life. She just looked at it and said, Come on, nobody has ever told me such a thing. That can't be true. Are you looking for a date? Forget it. He said, no, you are the most beautiful face I've ever seen. And he just kept staring at the mirror and said, genuinely, this is the most beautiful face I've ever seen in my life. She went home that day. She went and stood in front of the mirror and she looked at it. It was the same face that she had seen for a long time. She looked at it and said, okay, if I have the most beautiful fa face in the world, what the hell am I doing in a hairdresser's shop? She just packed her bags and left for the United States and became one of the greatest actresses ever. This is simply illogical. But no, it is very logical, it is just skipping a few steps, that's all. Logic has to go step by step, step by step. You can go that way. But uh, fortunately, life is brief. Unless you're willing to jump a few steps, nothing worthwhile will happen. If something phenomenal has to happen in your life, you have to jump a lot of steps. But you cannot jump these steps. The moment you start thinking, what about me? The moment you start thinking, what about me? You cannot jump the steps because now you brought yourself down to the most basic of the logic. What about me doesn't take any intelligence. Even the tweet, 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 that bird also is thinking, what about me, what about me? Yes or no? That's what he has seen. Can you hear that? What about me? That is the most basic of the logic. The moment you bring yourself down to that logic, you will not do anything worthwhile, believe me. I'll give you a guarantee, you will not do anything truly worthwhile in your life the moment you start thinking, what about me? It is because of this, forever people have been talking about selflessness, love, this one, that one. If you love also, it becomes, what about me? Isn't it so? Hmm? If you get married, then it gets worse. What about me? People <laughs> used to say, when you are a student, everybody is a communist. 
want equality, we want this, let's share, let's do that. The moment you get a job, you become a socialist. The moment you get married, you become a proper capitalist. <laughs> so, this what about me just brings you down to basic, very fundamental logic. Once you come to this, you will only walk one step at a time. If you walk, most of the time you are stuck. But if you do walk, you will walk one step at a time. If you go one step at a time, in this brief span of life, you will not do anything truly worthwhile. You cannot. If you survive, if you don't get into a mess, so, uh, Yesterday some very important industrialist uh, was saying he's only, he's only like uh, maybe thirty-nine, forty and he's one of the top industrialists in the country. He was saying, uh, I have uh, my mediclaim and my whatever. What are the other things you do? What are the other thing you do? In sh what is the other one? No, superannuity and whatever all this stuff. So I was thinking, okay, I don't have medicline, I don't have superannuity, I don't have insurance. <laughs> so these things, I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. <laughs> you do it. But uh, the moment we start thinking, if our thought process becomes about what about me, then you're down to the basics. No, 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 it's not about me, it's about my family, that's about you. No, it's about my country, that's about you. No, it's about my planet, it's still about you. I want you to know that. Whatever is yours is important to you, isn't it? <laughs> yes? Whether I say this is my teacup, or I say, this is my planet, there's not much difference, people think it is. Maybe in terms of what you do, your activity may change a little bit, but uh, nothing, no great difference will happen. So to bring this about, if we want to employ the logical mind, because we have to, otherwise we'll become senseless, We will not become senseless, we will become an absurd kind of sense. If you became totally senseless, that would be liberation. That would be absolute liberation, but that won't happen that way. So to go step by step, we have to use the logic the way it works best for us. If it has to work in the best possible way for us, first of all, if you can liberate your logic from the silly identities that you have taken on, starting from this little body. Don't have big ideas about your body, this is just earth recycling itself, isn't it? <laughs> this is just earth and recycle. You may think many great things about yourself. You know, you're doing all that, uh, whatever, uh, what are these things called, the bio stuff these days? You're biodegradable material, aren't you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you're not even as eternal as plastic. <laughs> you're just purely biodegradable. All those biofuels, what, are, what do you call them? Mm. Those biogas, uh, you know, the gobber gas, people are using human ex excreta also to produce gas endlessly. We want to do things. I'm not against those things. But the mindset will destroy the human being, not the activity. 
you try to use everything in activity, there is no problem. But the mindset will destroy the human being the moment he starts thinking about how to use everything. So, all the fancy ideas that people have about themselves is uh, just their own stuff. But all that's happened is that, that oh, the carpet is between you and that. I wish you had sat on the wet grass and the connection would be more real. <laughs> You're just a small mound on the earth. Just see yourself sitting here for next, uh, I don't want to reduce your lives, for next hundred years. If I say ten, somebody may get paranoid. <laughs> Hundred years you just sat here, you'll still be a mound, but a little smaller mound. You know, it happened to a lot of people. Have you seen those mounds? Some people have grossly mocked it with stones and sticks and whatever. Others are all just small mounds. All the undulation that you're walking, we don't know how many people are buried here. <laughs> you don't have to bury anybody. If they just sit here for a hundred years, they'll become small mounds like that. Small nice undulations in the lawn, really. Yes or no? So you popped out of this, you'll go back like this. This is not some great realization, this has been happening for millions of years, nothing new. But just see, we are not aware of it on a daily basis, with how much ignorance one can live, thinking this is it, isn't it? So, you are just to recycle, the planet is just want to cultivate itself and fertilize itself, it is doing. So this little bit of shit that comes up and goes down thinks so much about itself. But still, when I say shit, don't think something wrong. In many ways, it's the most composite and useful thing on the planet. Whatever you want to grow, you need it, isn't it? Yes? Similarly, if you want to grow a being out of this, you need it. No body, no being, isn't it? There are those without a body, but they also have a subtler body. No body means no being, please see. So, we are not trying to belittle the body. We must understand, because it comes with such a short expiry date and it's just a, such a nebulous happening. Simply it comes on and goes away. Because it's such a nebulous happening, but it has the great possibility of growing a being out of this. We must act quick. You can't go one step at a time. You have to go leaps and bounds. So the first and foremost thing is this base logic that we have, which makes our growth just very slow and laborious. What about me? What about me? What about me? What about you? We will be anyway sucked in. That's all about you. Either you make something fantastic out of this or you don't. Whichever way, anyway you will be sucked in. Yes? That's all about you. What else about you? You think you'll go to heaven? You, you're in heaven and missing it, that's all. <laughs> if we send you to another heaven, there also you'll miss it. Yes? Has anybody given you an insurance policy where you can't miss life? If you fall dead, somebody will benefit. If you fall dead, somebody will benefit. If nobody benefits, if you don't have insurance, the trees will benefit. Yes or no? 
Just look at the trees and see what their intentions may be for you. <laughs> they are just looking at you as manure. Hmm. Hope they sit here a little while longer. <clears throat> so this, whether you like it or you don't like it, not only on that level of appearing as a human body and disappearing, every moment this transaction is happening, you can't stop it. Whether you like something or you dislike something, still transaction is happening. I don't like this person, you can't stop it. What is in you is going there, what is there is coming here, it is all the time happening. So the only choice that you have is, either you allow this life process willingly or you make it an unwilling process. If you bec start thinking, what about me, you will become an unwilling process. When you become an unwilling process, do anything, and that's painful, that's rape. If you become a willing process, you become a love affair. If you become an unwilling process, this becomes a rape. Most people are being raped, not by men, don't blame the men, by life. Every day they're being raped because they're doing things that they're unwilling to do. It's very painful. Yes? Isn't it so? Every day they're doing things that they're unwilling to do and it's extremely painful to live a life like that. So, first and foremost thing, if anything spiritual has to touch you, first thing is to make this into your absolutely willing process. The world has become so conjuice, is the right word? You know, these days I'm traveling to North India more and more, so… At least a few key words. This being conjuice is not about money alone, usually I think it's used only in those terms. My problem is people are conjuice about with life. If they smile, it's controlled. <laughs> if they laugh, it's controlled. <laughs> if they cry, it's controlled. Whatever they do, it's all controlled. They're just being conjuice with life. Once it happened, there was a man who was always wanting to save and being conjuice. His house caught fire. Then he called the fire department and left two missed calls. This is going on, please see, in every aspect of your life. Maybe you don't mind a cell phone call, but uh, this is happening with every aspect of life. So then people will start talking about giving. It is not about giving, it is not about taking. It is just about being absolutely open and that openness will not happen if the basic calculation or uh, this base calculation of what about me, what about me, what about me comes. And today we are empowering this what about me with a great force because we are no more looking towards the east for the sun to rise. We are looking at the West, 
we have been at least. Now they are looking at the East. For the last fifty years or more, the Indians have been wanting to see a sunrise, but they have been facing West. Looking west and trying to see sunrise is a very hard thing, you know. You won't see it or you'll have a broken neck. <laughs> One of these things will happen to you. <laughs> or you have to grow eyes in the back of your head. That doesn't happen. Even if another eye comes, it comes in the forehead, you know. Even if such an evolutionary ha thing happens, you know it always happens in the forehead. <clears throat> so this spiritual process is not something that you do. You handle the physical, the mental, the emotional and the energy aspect of it properly. Keep it ready. What is spiritual happens, you can't make it happen. But if you don't keep the receptacle right, this is like growing pearls. You must create the right situation, then it happens. You try to grow that, it won't happen. This will not become a being by you striving for it but you have to strive to create the right kind of atmosphere for it, otherwise it won't happen again. If you struggle every day in the morning to open these things, flowers won't come in your garden. You don't even think of the flower, you think of the soil, the manure, the water, the sunlight. You never looked at the plant, one day it will be full of flower, isn't it? You are meditating every day, flowers, 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 flowers don't come. But uh, the cultures which are rooted in this kind of goal orientation are constantly telling you, don't worry about the root, don't worry about the manure, don't worry about the water, concentrate on the flower, it will come. Yes, they've been constantly telling you, yes, Small things in your life can be achieved like that. Using the sheer power of the mind, you can manifest certain things in the physical realm of life. You can become successful by using your mind. In the world you can become successful. You can make money. You can get what you want in the world by using and employing your mind but you will never know anything spiritual by the power of the mind because that's not its realm. But using the power of the mind you can build a ladder which you have to climb. I've always been saying your mind can be a ladder to the divine. You need to understand ladder is just a device, you still have to climb. I never said escalator, I only said a ladder. <laughs> You can build a ladder, but you still need to climb. If you don't climb, you don't go there. You just have two sticks standing there, isn't it? Ladder is just a bunch of sticks. Only if you use it to climb, it's a phenomenal thing. Otherwise, it's just a two sticks standing there with something connected, isn't it? Doesn't mean anything. So whatever we have started as a simple Isha Yoga process is an integrated process that you have to use it. There are different rungs, you have to climb them. Right now it looks like a round ladder. Wherever you climb, you come to the same place. However you climb, you come to the same place. That's the way it is. If you keep on climbing, 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 if there is a circle, if you keep on doing, 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 the faster and faster you start doing, slowly the circle will become bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. 
one day you will find everything is in the circle. So this is just like that. Keep on doing it, doing it, doing it. Don't worry about whether you're getting bigger or smaller, you don't bother about it, you just keep doing it and doing it and doing it. One day you find everything is within you. Every day you're calculating, am I going forward, backward, what is happening, am I better than the person who started yesterday? Now, you don't go anywhere because the moment you start thinking, what about me? You have come to very base logic which can only take one step at a time. It cannot take even two steps at a time. Unfortunately, or very… For, I think it's fortunately, human life is brief. very brief compared to what's happening on the planet. Even if you live hundred years, it's still a very brief time, isn't it? Hmm? It's a very brief time. So, in this brief time, if we want to do something <coughs> truly revolutionary, not… I'm not talking revolution in the street, Something truly revolutionary within this one, if something absolutely different needs to happen within us, don't try to start big things, little things. Just like simple thing, like instead of looking west to watch the sunrise, you start looking east. Very simple, isn't it? But it's a phenomenal difference. If these little, little things are done and keep doing it and keep doing it, slowly you find, slowly, one day like everything is within you, nothing is outside of you. If we want to do it with a bang, we can do it, but that will be the end of you. If you burst your boundary like that, then that'll be the end of you. <laughs> that'll not be a loss. No, in immediate sense, yes. What about my family? What about my work? What about this? What about that? Yes, in that sense. But uh, in a burst, if you attained, it's not a loss, it's wonderful actually. But we don't want to do such things, I don't want, want to talk about it because uh, people think maybe we are preparing for a Jonestown or something. You know, what's Jonestown, no? Oh, okay, that's good, you're nice and innocent <laughs> The longing to end this little self is considered suicide, isn't it? Yes. But that's spirituality too. If you just use the wrong methods, it becomes suicide. If you use the right methods, it becomes a spiritual process. The idea is to end this little one, isn't it? If you shoot yourself through the head, that's called suicide. If you simply sit here and blow your head, that's called spirituality <laughs> There's really not much difference, but it's a phenomenal difference. The same thing, but very different. The end result is very different, so it's different. If it could be done through suicide, that we could shoot people in the head and they would all become realized, I wouldn't hesitate for a moment. Really, if it was possible that way, I wouldn't hesitate for a moment. But unfortunately, it's not possible. It is not possible to make it happen to any unwilling being. It is only with willingness it can happen. If it was possible 
to do it forcefully. You think I would have spared the world? Why me? So many who came before me, you think they would have spared? They are all very treacherous beings. They would have done it. They wouldn't have left the job to us. <laughs> But you can't do it forcefully, that's the problem. Everything else in the world you can do it forcefully, please see, everything else. No, no, you can't make somebody love you forcefully, not true, you can. You must apply the right kind of force. <laughs> everything else can be done forcefully because whatever is physical, everything that's physical, can be moved forcefully, isn't it? Yes? It, this has been the norm in the world. If a young girl gets raped, normally the thing is she should marry the same man. I'm sure over a period of time did, she did fall in love with him and they were all right. Something that happened so forcefully, after a few years, isn't it so? Hasn't it happened? It's happened all the time in the world. So, anything can be done forcefully. But see how they handicapped us. This one thing cannot be done forcefully. <laughs> It'll never happen forcefully. It can only happen with openness. But that openness can be forced a little bit. That's all I'm trying to do. <laughs> That can be forced a little bit, but the essential nature of what it is can never be forceful. It just is not possible because it's non-physical. Force belongs to the realm of the physical. So force is out of question. If you want to happen, if you want this to happen to you in a most pleasant and wonderful manner, stop being conduced with life. If you just keep this one calculation aside in your life, what, what about me? Just keep it aside and see how wonderfully life will happen to you. I am not trying to teach you selflessness. People have always been saying, if you are selfless, everything will come to you. Isn't that selfish? <laughs> you know, people have always been saying, if you give, you will get more. This is horrible selfishness, isn't it? And this is a horrible calculation. At least I go get what I want is one thing. If you give, you will get more. Is it a horrible way to live? This is not about that. This is about just making the process of life a willingness. So that's why in Asia, everything, everybody is a volunteer, everybody is a volunteer. Why we speak of this with so much pride and regard towards that is, a volunteer means somebody who is willing. Not willing just to do this or that, somebody who is willing, just anything. There used to be, initially when we did the 90-day wholeness program, they developed one slogan. Uh, so I, because we were slowly taking them into a realm that they would never logically understand, but I'm using logic to take them. Ninety days people just stayed in the ashram. When there was no ashram, it was just a hut. Ninety days they just stayed there and that was the first program that happened there. And what happened there is a different matter. So as I'm going, I'm asking, I ask a question and they, that was okay, but this Sadhguru, and I keep asking, yes or no, yes or no, yes or no. First few days and few weeks of struggle, and after that, as their experiences went into a completely different realm, all of them developed one slogan, whatever Sadhguru asks, just say yes and yes. <laughs> so when I walked into the hall one day, they wrote one huge banner, yes and yes, 
whatever you ask, before you ask the question, yes and yes. <laughs> so you become like this to life, you become yes and yes to life, then everything will happen beautifully, nobody can stop it. So being a volunteer means training yourself to become yes and yes. Is this being stupid? I'm not, am I not using my discriminatory mind? If you used your discriminatory mind properly, to its fullest extent, you would become yes and yes. Because you have used it in immature ways, you become no and no, or uh, no, 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 oh yes. You know in India, Lot of people when they speak uh, English language, no, 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 no. I keep reminding people, one is enough. <laughs> if you say yes, 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 okay, if you want to hear that, when you say no, let one is enough, isn't it? Huh? No, 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 no. Have you heard this? Or is it only a South Indian phenomenon? Here also? No, 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 no. I think you say na, 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 na. If you must say no to something, just a gentle one no is enough. You don't need fifteen no's. <laughs> no, it is just a way of speaking. It is not a way of speaking. People are no, one big no, to get them to say yes, it needs coaxing, <laughs> isn't it? Otherwise everything no there. If they have to say yes, you have to woo them. <laughs> Otherwise they won't say yes. It's always been the whole thing, isn't it? Yes, to say yes. Oh, if you say yes, you get married, is that? <laughs> so if you don't want to say yes, see, say, learn to say neither. Not, I'm not talking about this in conversations with life. If you can be like this, simply, no yes, no no, simply, then the problem is you will become an ascetic. People think an ascetic is a no to the world, no. He is neither yes nor no. Whatever life is, let it be. That's a one big yes, isn't it? That's another way of saying yes, without uttering it. You know in India we say maunam san samatha suchanam. What it means? Somebody is silent, that means it's yes. <laughs> but you become silent only when you become one big no, isn't it? When you get angry and you are absolute no, that's when you become silent, isn't it? <laughs> <clears throat> but if you simply become silent, you are neither yes nor no. Whichever way life is, that's the way you are. Then you are one big yes, because life is all yes. It's trans everything is transacting with everything, it's just one big yes, isn't it? If the tree says no, why should these idiots breathe the oxygen that I give out? I'll hold back. You will die. You may not die. You will go and run to the next tree. But he will die for sure. Isn't it? For sure he will die. You can go to the next garden. But he will die for sure. So if I say no to you, it is not that you will die, it is me who will die. No is the poison of life. So if you drink the poison, you die, not somebody else. But always human beings have this idea of performing a miracle. When you become angry, you become no, isn't it? When you become resentful, you become no. When you become fearful, you become no. When you become hateful, you become no to life. Is it so? 
But the problem is, whenever you become like this, whenever you become resentful, you think something will happen to somebody. No, life doesn't work like that. Resentment, fear, anger, hatred, these things are like, you drink the poison, but you expect somebody else to die. Life doesn't work like that. You drink it, you die. So the process, I'm not talking about the spiritual goal, the process of what we do is to slowly make you into a yes, one big yes. So whether it comes to the program or the Kriya or the volunteering process, all these things are structured so that you become yes in the body, yes in the mind, yes in your emotions and yes in your energy, it's very important because all of them can self-imprison themselves. All of them are capable of that. Sadhguru, when you begin to say yes and then you experience what that yes does to you… Are you already yes. married? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, then it's safe. You know. <laughs> Around you, there is no. What about how do you go on with that? So the trouble started with the first yes. <laughs> <coughs> so uh, you are being exuberant, your family is not cooperating. The world around you is not cooperating. See, I want you to understand this. The more lonely you feel, the more depressed you feel, the more the need for having company, isn't it? Yes? The more joyful you become, the more exuberant you become, the less and less you need company. So when you are alone, if you feel lonely, that means obviously you are in bad company. <laughs> if you were with a good person, why would you feel lonely? You would feel great, exclusive, <laughs> isn't it? So, your exuberance is not manufactured. If it is manufactured, yes, you need company. Now people's idea of exuberance is, let's talk, let's dance, let's listen to music, let's do this, let's do that. Not necessarily. You can just sit quietly here and be absolutely exuberant. If you are exuberant by your own nature, if, you're exu if the life has become exuberant, Activity is just a consequence. But if your life is not exuberant, you're trying to crank it up with activity, then activity is the means. So this is a big difference. Either you dance and arrive at a certain state of exuberance, or because you're exuberance and you cannot contain it, you dance. These are two different things. Either because you are happy, you burst out into laughter or somebody told you every day in the morning if you laugh and laugh and laugh, one day you will become happy. <laughs> These are two different ways. Tell me which way does life work? Look at everything around you. Which way is it working? Is it because there are flowers, the plant and the root came up like a support to the flower? Is that so? Because there is a beautiful flower, this plant and its root grew so that it can have a nice pedestal. Is that so? This is so with this one because this is manufactured. Because there is a microphone and they didn't want to trouble me, then they manufactured a stand, a stem to it. 
Is that the way this one happened? Because the exuberance in the stem could not be contained, it flowered, isn't it? This is the way life should happen. If you try to do the other way, then it's going to be a very hard life. The hardest life in the world is to be constantly putting yourself out into the world like you are joyful when you are not. That is the mo hardest thing to do in life. Is it so? When you are not happy, to show everybody that you are happy, it costs phenomenal amount of life, isn't it? Have you noticed this? Some people are there when they are happy, they are happy, when they are not happy, they are not happy, they just show it to everybody, the whole world knows their thing. Their act of life, everybody knows. Some people manage <laughs> all the time, but it takes phenomenal amount of energy to keep it up like that. You will grow diseases in your body, I'm telling you. You will go, you will grow lumps and tumors in your body if you try to constantly put on an act. This is happening all over the world. Actually, if you are willing to be a subject, I can demonstrate it to you. Within a few hours, I can make you grow a tumor. <laughs> really, I'm not joking. If you make your mind in a certain way, you will do that. Only saving grace for you is, you never do anything steadily. You are off and on, off and on, off and on. Your joy is off and on, your misery is off and on, never on. If you become utterly miserable, you will see the consequence of it. If you become utterly joyful, you will see the consequence of it. If you become utterly angry, you will see the consequence of it. You don't see the consequence of anything because you are always off and on, off and on, off and on. People ask me, Sadhguru, what kind of uh, attitude and emotion? I said, damn thing, any damn thing is okay. You want to be angry? Be angry. Twenty-four hours, non-stop, you will get realized. I'm not joking. You, you like love? Be loving twenty-four hours, you will get realized. You want to be depressed? Depression, no, that's not an attitude, that's a pathological problem. It will make you sink elsewhere. Anything else, just keep it on for twenty-four hours, you will come to a certain realization. But nothing is there. We were also singing that. Nishchala tattvam, jivan mukti, that's all it takes. You keep changing the direction and the course of your journey, how will you go anywhere? You will end up in circles. Which way you want to go, I am not deciding. You go wherever you want to go, but steadily. Not every day altering it, altering it, altering it. Everything, every cell, Every atom in the existence can be a doorway to the beyond if you go steadily at it. But the problem is people keep shifting and shifting and shifting. And that's the biggest problem with today's world, like never before. People think it's a virtue for them to say, our attention spans are very short. They think they've progressed. They can't listen to anything, they can't do anything. All discussions about the future media, what is… You know, in India, a cinema means four and a half hours at one time. They cut it down to three hours. Now most of the Western films are ninety minutes. Now because people want to watch movies, you know, it will happen in a year's time or so, movies will come on your cell phone. Obviously, you can't do this for one and a half hours. So movies, stories are being told in three to ten minutes. A ten-minute movie, cinema is over. The same nonsense, you could have done it in ten minutes, so why were you wasting our time for three hours? <laughs> but that's how it is, that's the whole thing. 
Now you can watch every cinema in the world because it's only three minutes. The real long ones are four and a half minutes. And they're telling the whole story in a thirty-second advertisement, aren't they? Just like that. You want to watch a cinema? Oh. So what will they do with the commercials then? <laughs> if one minute, two minute becomes a full-length movie, what to do with the commercial? I hope they disappear. 